All right, now we have a new chapter of Dr. Stone. This is chapter 126, The Three-Dimensional Stratagem. So in the last chapter, they talked about the three dimensions of this battle, that being uh, the gigantic strength of Mo, the drone technology of the Kingdom of Science, and the petrification weapon wield, wielded by Kirisame. And here we see on the cover those three elements uh, reflected again, but here I think the three-dimensional stratagem isn't going to be so much about um, these conflicting human dimensions, but instead the ability for the drone to maneuver in 3D, right? That's my guess, at least. Final battle will be waged at Wake Break Cliff. Wave Break Cliff. We've got the mobile lab stashed. Usui getting himself in position to control the drone. Our army of hooded warriors, which uh, vary in fighting prowess very, very wildly. They vary very much. Mm. I, I, I should somehow be able to distinguish between those words. V-A-R-Y, very. V-E-R-Y, very. Okay, whatever, where are we going? <laughs> ah, the crap, the Simon Mascard drone. Okay, so very strategically chosen spot. Oh, this is a spread too. My gosh. It really is the eve of battle. Army of hooded invaders has appeared at Wake Break Clip. Murderize. I swear I've been seeing the word murderize in scanlations a lot lately. I don't know what's up with that. I don't know if it's like <laughs> some recent trend. People just all all this one specific slang. I don't get it. Whatever. Okay. Getting the warriors roused up. Seems like they're quite confident, with good reason. If I guys are all coming here now, they're going to beat us real easy, especially since there's just a few of us. Battle is a 10 billion chance we get our butts handed to us. Right. See, this is where the plan kind of breaks down to me. Like, Moses, of course, on their side. But Moses isn't the only warrior. And they've already lost Kohaku. The only real fighter they have now is Kin. Uh, so, Kin Kinro, that is. Oh, by the way, uh, someone in the comments pointed out that the the spear that Kinro is carrying wasn't his golden spear way back from the village. It's actually Ginro's silver spear. And uh, uh, it, it is hard to tell. The commenter pointed out that the uh, decorations and stuff, you can tell. Um, in color, of course, it would be a lot more obvious, but... Such are the limitations of manga as a predominantly black and white medium. Um, yeah, I think that's really, really nice. I'm, I'm glad to have learned that. I think that's uh, yet another touching tribute. Okay, yeah, so how are they supposed to just... Uh, I got an Epic Games friend request, what? And how are they just supposed to ignore um, like all of the other soldiers, all of the other island-ready warriors that are as strong as everyone besides... Kinro, at least, and possibly stronger than Kinro, too. And then you have people like Suika, who's literally just a child. Like, this seems so dangerous. They must have some other plan. Let's go over the plan. All right, let's do it. The one absolute requirement for us to win this thing is forcing the enemy to toss the petrification weapon. Otherwise, a mid battle would be pointless. Don't worry, Suika, our drone sneak attack is going to get their weapon all tangled up. Okay, so that part I'm confident in. Even though Suhiru is looking down at this controller like he's never seen it before, which is a little troubling. Then the power team hidden in the mobile lab tugs on that wire like their life depends on it. Because it does. So this is where they've actually got most of the people that are probably better equipped to be fighters. So yeah, there's no part of this plan that involves the, the hooded warriors actually doing a good job in fighting. Finally, we use the stolen weapon. And Yo used the yun to gun to beat back the enemy forces. Sure. Biggest danger is the third player in all this, Moe's. Watch out, because it'll be our ally only in the beginning. When we send the petrification weapon, it'll change into a vicious enemy who will slaughter everyone here. Yeesh! Okay, so... Like, to me, the big flaw in this plan is, what if they just don't throw the petrification weapon? Right? Like, the Hooded Warriors, of course they have a reputation of being very strong. 
but very, very quickly they'll realize that this reputation may have been exaggerated. Like, as soon as the skirmish begins, they should see that only one person has any idea what they're doing. So, wouldn't they just be like, well, we don't need to use the petrification weapon? Because the petrification weapon, they don't have a way to depetrify people, as far as I can tell. So it's quite dangerous. If they accidentally petrify an ally, that's just GG. Like, they'll never get that person back. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. The, so it begins the final three-way battle. We'll see what happens. They gotta leave some of it mysterious, I guess. So it's thrilling to watch. Here. Hmm. Yeah. They are totally outnumbered. Totally outskilled. Kirisame. Mose. The, that other guy. Miracle Revenge! That guy's attacking me right away. Yeah, they want to just overwhelm them immediately. <laughs> I bet Taishi can like, damn it. Yeah, they're all just rushing in. This time it isn't about some petty bargain. I fight for the sake of true battle. I fight for myself. Fight with what the Kingdom of Science has granted me. Okay, so Kinro stepping up. This is really the skirmish that kind of determines the whole flow of this battle, and thus the entire battle itself. If Kinro is enough to intimidate them, if he manages to just like one shot this guy, then they almost will, almost certainly will deploy the petrification weapon, right? So it all comes down to that. This golden spear. Oh. Wait, Kinro is gold, though, right? Kin to Gin. Gin is silver, Kin is gold. So I thought he would have a silver spear. Or at least that's what the commentator thought and convinced me of. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Either way, it's a nice symbolic touch. Okay, so he uses the shininess of the spear, I think, here to dazzle and distract the enemy. This is such a cool effect, <clears throat> the shininess of the spear, that you can see Kinro's face reflected in it just subtly. And I think over here near the top you can see an eye that might be the face of the, the enemy warrior, I don't know. Just a nice little flourish. And, and the fact that they're using the shiny spear aspect um, just kind of reinforces that this series is always about tactics, it's always about intelligent fighting. It's it's never just the brute strength, which is fun. Oof. He's put back immediately. He can barely handle himself. The Hood Warrior is really fierce. Well, he snuck up on us in the dark. is super strong. Oh, this is a, yeah, this makes sense as a spread. Woo! And then they have uh, Unkyo. Shooting arrows. Very smart. You know, before when I was like, Kinro is the only warrior they've got here, I forgot about uh, Ukyo. Ukyo is actually crazy strong and, and quite a fighter in many respects. It's too bright to see. Some sort of sorcery. They're just reflecting the light strategically. Ah. Dang. So they, they actually are... Uh, they are holding up okay, and, and something that's quite close to a full-on battle, even though they're not actually physically fighting, this this is more of a victory than I thought they would be able to achieve on their own. Okay, and then Moe's inviting uh, Yuzuriha and... Uh, well, I can never think of her name. Island Girl. She, she has a, a name. <laughs> she has a name that every time I hear it, I'm like, how am I forgetting this? Because it's just the name of something. It's like the name of a flower or something. And Suika, we're probably the three weakest fighters in this group, are going to effortlessly beat up Moe's. Oh, that's so cute! <laughs> oh, that's pretty fun. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just so cute. <laughs> Especially Yuzuriha, who looks like she's maybe even having fun with this. What's her name? Marcel? Marcel? Something like that? Mosca's flying back. 
Normally even an army of 100 couldn't stop Moses. And then, you know, he's laying on quite thick here. Be a Kirisame. Oh, if only there was some sort of weapon we could use to just take them out instantly. Ah, oh, ah, oh, dang. Ah, oh, it sounds so familiar, right? I kind of feel like we have something like that lying around. Like, doesn't sound right that we can, like, wipe out a bunch of enemies no matter how strong they are, like, instantly? And it doesn't really matter how many there are, how strong they are? Like, didn't we do that once before, like, not that long ago with, like, a boat or something? Do you remember... <laughs> Being very subtle. Go ahead and toss that thing. Okay. She retrieves the petrification weapon. Everyone gets down, covers their eyes. Is that does that really save you? I don't think it saves you though to cover your eyes. Otherwise, like during the initial worldwide petrification, everybody who is like asleep, or just happened to be blinking, or was Shutting their eyes really tightly for dramatic emphasis uh, would just all be petrified, or not all be all be not petrified. That is right. So I don't know. Maybe she's just saying them that to make them feel safe. Oh, and they don't. That's right. She doesn't want them to see the true form of the weapon. All right, all right. Never mind. I must understand. So what it really is is that she aims it specifically so that only the enemies are affected. And then she tells everyone else to close their eyes so they don't see how it really works. Um, and then she convinces them that closing your eyes is what keeps you safe. And then if, <laughs> which I'm sure has happened before, they, they accidentally petrify uh, somebody on their own side, she'll just be like, well, I, they forgot to close their eyes. Like, let this be a lesson. <laughs> okay. So she's getting ready to toss it. So you're in position. Keep right outside the flash's range, but close enough to reach the invaders in a single bound. So you invaders are no fools. You're hoping to stop me with your sorcery, right? Now you showed me how it works in the cave. It takes a single moment and one finger to manipulate things with your magic spells. Knowing that it'll just strike quickly. Remove your heads from your bodies as you work your spells. I win. Okay, pretty smart based on everything he's seen. And I actually don't really see how the gun gets them out of this, in this situation. Because Moe's is just going to kill them. Like, he's literally planning on just beheading them. So, it's not enough to be like, bang, 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 look at that. We could do that to you. Because your head is already off. You have to be, if anything, bang, 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 you're dead. And I really don't think we're going in that direction. Unless simultaneously while grabbing the petrification weapon, they also demonstrate the value of the gun. Ah, this is gonna get crazy. Okay, she throws the thing. Uh, okay. She's thinking back. What, what? Okay, okay, so he gave her something else. He he gave her something in lieu of the petrification weapon. I don't know what that is. And this was right before they were going to to fight the hooded army. See, this makes sense. It couldn't have gone this smoothly because Ibarra is still the real enemy. And it wouldn't be very climactic if they got the petrification weapon and then they just force Ibarra to roll over, right? Like, there has to be a, a full-on fight with him as well. And then he's wearing an earring. And it makes this old man the strongest. is isn't just having an army, but remaining cautious in spite of that. So he's wearing an earring, but then he notices Moses' earring, which of course is the communication device. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Oh, 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 that's what it was. 
Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, what it was that he noticed uh, Moses' earring. He's like, where have I seen that before? He remembers that girl that they petrified, Kohaku, had the same type of earring. So he wanders over to her statue, plucks it out. Ooh, so he's been hearing everything the Kingdom of Science has been saying to Moe's, presumably. Obviously, they're not going to try to contact Kohaku anymore. They know she's down for the count. But Moe's, they've been giving all sorts of instructions to, hey, dress up like the Hooded Warrior. Hey, go attack the people. By the way, this is when we're planning on doing this thing, blah, blah, blah. Old man wins. Okay. That's pretty good. I love that. Because all of the threads for this plot were there before. Like, I, I love that when the next twist, when the next development comes from an aspect of a previous plot point that you overlooked, right? Like, we saw the immediate ramifications of Kohaku being petrified. But because we were so caught up with that and how that progressed into the next immediate plot point, we didn't think about, hey, she still has the communication hearing. Hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a huge liability. Has, has proven to be. So she throws... If it's not the petrification weapon, though, what is it? Do the weapon. Activate the drone. Oh, yeah, we're gonna win. But... I don't think it's the petrification weapon. What is it, though? What is it? What could it be? Because now he knows Moses is a traitor. So ideally, with whatever his plan is now, he would wipe out both the invaders and Moses in one fell swoop. I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, we'll have to find out next week. Ooh, what a good chapter, though. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Okay. Let's, uh, yeah, let's see you next week. Let's see.